Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, how we doing? Harrison Graham here from Chat Sports. Just a week away from the regular season, so it's time to break down that 53-man roster. Roster cuts were made over the weekend. I'll get into the guys who got cut, get into the depth chart of every position. But first, I've got a question for you guys. Who's ready for week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars? Type Chiefs Kingdom if you are in the comments below. Chiefs Kingdom in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Chiefs Kingdom, it's going to be a big season, right? Let me know who's ready for week one against the Jaguars. Let's talk about it in the comments section. All right, some news before we get into the roster specifics. Chiefs, br Chiefs bringing in Shady McCoy. One-year deal worth $4 million, three of which is guaranteed. Bills cut McCoy on their roster cuts, so Chiefs bring him in. Andy Reid, of course, drafted Shady back in 2010, had four very productive seasons in Philadelphia, is coming off the worst year of his career in Buffalo, just 3.2 yards per carry, only 514 yards rushing, uh, three rushing touchdowns, also had like 300 yards receiving. Um, but don't be too alarmed by that 3.2 number. The Bills had a makeshift offensive line last year, and they've basically replaced the whole unit this year. So I'm not saying this is elite 2012-2013 Shady McCoy, but he should be better than that. Question I got for you guys, what will LaShawn McCoy's role be with the Kansas City Chiefs? Obviously, you got Damian Williams, the rookie Darwin Thompson, some other guys. We'll get to the uh, depth chart later on in the show. But what do you think his role will be on the 2019 Chiefs team in this offense? I think Andy Reid will use him a lot in the pass game, uh, in the screen game that Andy Reid is known for. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. A couple of trades that were made before roster cuts happened. Uh, Chiefs sending Carlos Hyde to the Texans. They needed a running back. They get back Martinus Rankin in return, kind of a project offensive lineman. So I think that makes some sense. They were going to cut Carlos Hyde anyway. Also, they send Mark Fields up to Minnesota. TBD on the return, I would guess it's a comp pick, sixth or seventh round, depending on how much Fields plays what his role ends up being in Minnesota. They didn't draft him, so they're not going to get much in return. Probably weren't going to keep him on their roster. Would have been a practice squad candidate, but I imagine they get some sort of comp pick in return there. All right, some notable cuts here. Jeff Allen cut by the Chiefs just recently re-signed with Kansas City. Did not make the 53-man roster. General Manager Brett Veach did hint that Jeff Allen could be back. They got to put Chad Henney on six-week IR soon. They had to keep him on the 53-man so they didn't lose him. Uh, so he could be back when that happens as soon as today, uh, albeit. But as of now, he is not on the roster. Cody Thompson, another notable cut. I had him on my initial projection as the 53rd guy on my roster. Had a great camp, was productive in the preseason. The undrafted kid out of Toledo. He's a lock to make the practice squad if he clears waivers. Justin Hamilton, he was cut by the Chiefs as well. Just a numbers game, didn't produce enough. Chiefs defensive line is very loaded. And while he's probably a tick better than Kalen Saunders right now, the Chiefs were not gonna cut their third round pick from four months ago. It just wasn't gonna happen. So Justin Hamilton does not make the roster. Herb Miller, another guy, had a pretty good camp at corner. He was one of my last five er, guys on the roster. Chiefs only carrying four corners right now. We'll get into that depth chart later in the show because Mo Claiborne suspended. He'll miss the first month. Uh, so they're going a little light at corner. Herb Miller did not make the cut. He will probably be on the practice squad. All right, guys, NFL season's here. You want more Chiefs coverage? Got to subscribe to Chat Sports. I'm going to be doing content all year long. As long as you guys keep watching, keep subscribing, tell a friend, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. We want to keep doing these videos. Tom does a lot of stuff. Mitch does a lot of stuff. Thomas is doing great stuff with the 49ers. We have all kinds of NFL coverage on Chat Sports. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Latest rumors, news, highlights, all of that stuff. You can find it on YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. All right, some other notable cuts here. Got five guys. Khalil McKenzie, I thought he had a chance at making the roster. That transition to guard just hasn't really worked out so well for him, so he didn't make it. Kyle Shermer, Chase Litton, the quarterbacks. Coming into camp, I was hoping one of these guys would push Chad Henney. Neither were able to do so, and when Henney fractured his ankle, they went and signed Matt Moore. Look for Shermer to maybe be on the practice squad. I think Chase Litton's days with Kansas City are completely over. Demontre Wade, another corner. You know, I had him behind Herb Miller, behind Fields, but I thought he had an outside shot of making the roster. Look for him to maybe land on the practice squad as well. Pace Murphy, another off, uh, offensive lineman there. He's a practice squad candidate. 
as well. Uh, remaining cuts here, nothing super notable. Uh, obviously, you got Dino Boyd, Jamal Custis, uh, Rashard Davis, a couple of receivers there. I liked what I saw from Rashard Davis. I think he has a chance at the practice squad, although with Thompson being there now, maybe not. Raymond Davison, Hunter Dimmick as well. Five more here. We got uh, Forts and Fox. Uh, Jack Fox, not enough to push. Uh, Dustin Colquitt, uh, the punter out of Rice, they cut him. Manasa Garner, uh, tight end, did not make the cut. Goldich and Dewan Hines uh, did not make the roster as well. The safety, Harold, uh, Harold Jones Cordy, I thought he had a chance coming into camp to be one of the last safeties on the roster, but Armani Watts, Jordan Lucas provide more on special teams. He doesn't make the cut. Nick Kaiser, look for him to land on the practice squad. I liked what I saw from him a little bit. I think he can be a practice squad guy. Marcus Marshall, running back. Too many running backs on this roster. Rob McCray, Dakari Monroe did not show enough as well. Jimmy Murray, the center. Uh, I thought he maybe could make it, but they're going with the seventh round pick out of Illinois, uh, Nick Algretti. He's going to be the backup center. Chidi Okiki, Andrew Soro, Jalen Tolliver, Kevon Walker, uh, they don't make it either. So I'll ask you guys, which Chiefs cut made you the most upset? Let me know in the comments below. I'd probably go Cody Thompson. I understand why they cut him. They had to bring in DeAnthony Thomas, who actually isn't on the official roster yet since he's out week one. Um, but once that happened, that put him on the outside looking in. But I liked what I saw from him. I think at, at some point a team might snatch him up. I really wanted Cody Thompson to make the team. But let me know which cut made you the most upset. All right, injured players here. Um, you've got Felton Davis and Michael Hunter. Wave slash IR. So basically what happened is the Chiefs waved him. But if no one claims these guys for 24 hours, they will be... Um, on IR for the Chiefs. They'll be able to keep their rights. So we'll see what happens there. We're creeping up on that uh, on that uh, timeline right now. Gary Dieter Breland speaks on IR as well. Darius Harris, he's on the non-football injured list. Uh, so he's basically he's basically on the pup list. That's, that's what that means there. Morris Claiborne, uh, not on in the initial 53-man roster because he is suspended for the first four games for violating the PED policy. Does not count, like I said, against the roster. He can be activated week five versus the Colts. Chiefs only carrying four corners right now, so they may maybe they cut an offensive lineman at that point. We will see what happens there. DeAnthony Thomas not on the official roster yet because he is suspended week one for violating the substance abuse policy. He can be activated week two against the Raiders. I would imagine Tremont Smith is the guy who gets cut there um, because I was shocked he made the roster at all. We'll get to the running back depth chart in just a minute. All right, quarterbacks. These are the guys that made the roster. Pat Mahomes, Matt Moore. We knew those were the top two guys. Didn't know if they would put Henny on season-ending IR. They chose to not. They're keeping him on the 53. Uh, they will almost certainly put him on IR any day now uh, for the short-term IR, but they had to keep him on the initial list so he was eligible for this season. They'll cut him. Maybe, like I said, they bring back Jeff Allen to help bolster that offensive line. Running backs. This is how I've got it right now. Damian Williams, one. LaShawn McCoy, two. Darwin Thompson, three. I think bringing in McCoy tells me that this is going to be a running back by committee. Uh, Tremont Smith, Daryl Williams also on the roster. Smith could be a one-week-and-done candidate, or he might even be cut right away after bringing in McCoy. Anthony Sherman on the roster as well. Uh, when DeAnthony Thomas comes back, Tremont Smith just doesn't have a role. You don't, you don't need him. You've got special teams covered. But I'll ask you guys, who would you cut – for Shady McCoy or when D'Anthony Thomas comes back. Type T for Tremont Smith, D for Daryl Williams. It's got to be Tremont Smith, and it's not that I don't think he can produce on special teams and maybe develop into something, but put him on the practice squad, see what he can do. He's, he clearly didn't make it as a corner last year. They tried to move him to running back. That takes time. Did not do enough in the preseason. I'm cutting Tremont Smith. I am typing my T in the comments below. All right, wide receiver depth chart. Only kept five because DeAnthony Thomas doesn't count against the depth chart yet. So only these other five, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, Demarcus Robinson, McCall Hardman, Byron Pringle, those are your five receivers. Pringle making it over Thompson largely due to his versatility and his ability on special teams. We'll see what happens week two when DeAnthony Thomas can be activated. Thought they'd keep six, chose to just initially keep five. Tight end depth chart. No real surprise, I nailed this one here. I thought Yelder might be an IR candidate, but Brett Veach is saying he could return from practice as soon, or to practice as soon as this week. Kelsey, Blake Bell, the other two guys there. Obviously, Kelsey, arguably the best tight end 
in the NFL. Kaiser Garner were cut as well, as we mentioned earlier. So it'll be interesting to see when Yelder is back in the fold. Who will have a bigger impact this season? Went over the receivers, went over the tight ends. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, you know, two of the best weapons in the NFL on the same offense. Type H for Tyreek Kill, type K for Travis Kelsey. Um, this is a tough one for me. I have to go Tyreek Hill because every time this guy touches the ball, he can score. But Travis Kelsey is basically undefendable. Linebackers can't stay with him. Safeties can't stay with him. You're not rarely you can't put a number one corner on him because then Tyreek Hill is running free. But type H for Hill, type K for Kelsey, and let me know in the comment section below. Offensive line, a couple of surprises here. I thought Jeff Allen would make the initial 53. I think they will bring him back once Henny goes to IR. But starting five, nothing new there. Irving was a lock. Um, Ryan Hunter was a bit of a surprise. Did not know if he would make it. They choose to keep him. And then Rankin's the guy they traded for from the Texans when they sent Carlos Hyde to Houston. So nine guys right now. We'll see what happens with Jeff Allen if they bring him back. Defensive end. They are going with these five. Frank Clark, Alex Okafor, those are going to be your starters. Ogba will rotate in a lot. Passanio, a.k.a. Silent K, had a big preseason. He was on the outside looking in coming into camp. Had a monster preseason, though. He made it. And Jeremiah Tatu, kind of linebacker, defensive end, hybrid. They're choosing uh, to bring him in as a defensive end. Uh, he sneaks in to the final 53 after a strong preseason. Defensive tackle, depth chart. Five as well, Chris Jones, Derek Noddy, Xavier Williams, Joey Ivey after a strong camp in preseason, and Kalen Saunders did not play well, but third round rookie, you're not going to move on from him after one camp. He makes the final 53 as well. This will probably be a red shirt type of season for him. I would not expect him to contribute very much, if at all, this season. Who will lead the Chiefs in sacks in 2019? It's got to be on two guys, right? Frank Clark or Chris Jones. Give me Frank Clark. I, you know, I, I think Jones is going to get a lot of uh, attention, get a lot of double teams. Obviously, Clark will get some as well, but you can't double team both those guys on every play. I think most teams will protect the interior. So I think Frank Clark will lead the Chiefs in sacks. Let me, go, let me know in the comments who you think will lead the Chiefs in sacks this season. All right, linebackers, these are the six I had. These are the six that ended up being. Hitchens, Raglan, Wilson, uh, Darren Lee, obviously, is your fourth guy there, can play all three spots. Uh, ben Neiman had a strong camp of preseason. Dorian O'Daniel, still a work in progress. Weren't going to move on from him after just one season, though. He's a, he's a special teams contributor as well. He sneaks on to the 53 as your sixth linebacker. Cornerback, uh, Bashad Breeland, Traverius Ward, your starters on the outside. Kendall Fuller at nickel. Uh, Rashad Fenton, your fourth corner. Mo Claiborne doesn't count against the 53 until he's activated. He can be activated in week five. So they're going wide at corner. I'm a little bit surprised by this, which makes me ask you this question. Should the Chiefs trade for a top cornerback? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Obviously, the Patrick Peterson rumors were out there throughout the uh, entire uh, offseason. He's out the first six games, I believe, uh, with the suspension. So you wouldn't have him until week seven. Um, but if you can buy a low, I think it would be worth it. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Give me other trade ideas as well. Uh, I like uh, playing trade hypotheticals. Let me know in the comment section. Safety, uh, I only had four on my projection. They decide to keep Armani Watts as well. Is that third strong safety? Obviously Thornhill and Matthew, your starter. Sorensen's kind of your third safety, can play both spots. Um, but he's listed as a free safety there. And uh, Jordan Lucas, Armani Watts, again, core special teamers. They make the roster as well. Specialists, um, obviously your, your core three, Butker, Colquitt, Winchester, your kicker, punter, and long snapper. Tyree Kill is going to be your punt returner. For now, Tremont Smith is your kick returner. We'll see how long he lasts. I think DeAnthony Thomas can take over those duties as soon as week two. All right, guys, it's Labor Day weekend. I watch a lot of college football this weekend. I'm a huge college football nut. How will you spend your Labor Day tomorrow? Uh, it's Sunday as we're videoing this right now. Do you have the day off? Do you have to work? I have to work tomorrow on Labor Day. Sucks for me, right? But let me know how you've spent your weekend and how you will spend your Labor Day, and we'll see you next time.